everybody, and welcome to a brotherly wild ride with Steve-O. We've got Wee Man. And not only can I say that I consider him a brother, but there's a chapter in my new book that's called Everyone Needs Someone Who Will Call Them an Asshole. And Wee Man's the star of that chapter in a big way. Wow, did he call me an asshole. Wow, was he right. And wow, am I grateful to have people in my life like that. So, man... Uh, not only am I excited about my book coming out on Tuesday, I'm excited about this episode with Wee Man. We really get into it. Uh, juicy, fun stuff about life, business, and fame. God, it's. Uh, I needed to get a bunch of stuff off my chest about how um, overwhelming it can be since this last Jackass movie came out. It was like... It's been it's been a lot, a, a really noticeable difference. And uh, man, do we talk about that in intimate detail? Um, so yeah, I feel great. Dare say I look great, and I'm not taking full credit for that. I'm giving credit for that, at least partially, a lot to Athletic Greens and AG One, which is the most convenient, comprehensive nutrition you can get. Daily nutrition in one little pack or one little scoop loaded with 75 different vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfood, probiotics, adaptogens. This stuff is not only delicious, but I think it's the healthiest stuff you can put in your body. I really do. It fills in the gaps in your diet. If you're not eating all super nutritious food, then a scoop of AG1 is going to make the difference. It doesn't just fill in your, your nutrition gaps. It helps with your gut health. It helps with your brain. It, uh, and it's really delicious. Um, I'm so happy that uh, I haven't had my AG1 yet today because I get to have it now. And you can have it too. Plus, with your first order, you can get five of these free, comprehensive, convenient nutrition packs plus an entire year of immune-boosting vitamin D if you go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo. Simple as that, man. You can check this stuff out. It's Every bit as good as they say. I swear by it every day. I love it. You're going to love it too. So go to athleticgreens.com slash Devo. And now, without further ado, let's get into it. And I promise I won't freak out. Right. What did you freak out about? It was just so hot. It was like 100 degrees something. And like the AC was shutting off and we were doing one. And it was oh. just like an oven in here. And I, and I was just It was like the third podcast of the day too. Okay, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we man. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. I love it so much <laughs> when somebody who I did a podcast with on Zoom can then... Oh, Dude. finally comes back in. Is uh, yeah, it's my first time in the van. Right. Yeah. This yeah. Is what, yeah. We had you on Zoom as like episode. I don't know four, five, four or five. It was pretty early in the five pandemic too. I remember too. It was uh, a question. We were trying to do it in person, and the pandemic had just become a thing. Yeah. And you were like, oh, you know, like I'm living with somebody who's immunocompromised, and it's just not responsible. Yeah. For me to I do totally that. Was. I got to do it on Zoom. My ex was, uh, she's like uh, type one diabetic. So she was, yeah. you know. And so I was like, no, I got, and, and it was crazy. During that time, I only stayed home for a month. I could uh, only last indoors one month well, and we're and, so lucky because we've got fucking vans we, we yeah. can shelter in place anywhere we <laughs> yeah. want <laughs> yeah it was rad i do i was camping so much and barbecuing all right. the time during that, that, that time your, that was your deal on instagram live i was day, yeah huh? i was a grill master and i i'm glad i was because now it, going barbecuing anywhere or cooking anywhere i just i got it down What's your uh, method? Are you using propane? Are you using coals? I use I use everything. I cook from either like wood in a fire pit to propane on uh, like a griddle grill. I do that. 
and like uh, different uh, bri- briquettes, you know, to smoke and do different things. Like I learned how to smoke meats. I learned how to use a griddle. I did like straight raw fire barbecues, like in a pit. So nice. yeah, it, it was a good time. It was perfect. Like I think a lot of people learned something new during that time, and that was mm-hmm. mine. Yeah, I mean, we, we, <laughs> I, I learned how to fucking talk over people on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't learn it then. No, no. You were already doing it way before podcasts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that you're going to get into like the RV lifestyle, or are you going to stick to the? What van? are you talking about? Get into it? No, no, because oh. he, 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 you guys have. What, what do you call this versus like the well, RV? Well, this is a Class B motorhome. Oh, Class B motorhome. This, this is what, a Class B. And then Mine's you have a Class like, A for tour. Class A, a for tour. Yeah, is my tour bus. So, do you think you're going to get into the Class A lifestyle? I think down the line I am. It's uh, so rad. I love, I love it, it so much, dude. I love it too, and I love. I love being on the road and in nature, you know, because we, we're here in the city where wherever, you know, we live and we're just always around cars and traveling. When I just get out in nature, I'm just so stoked. I'm just like, phone's gone, turn on some music, light a fire and just chill. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's good. And the, the lifestyle I have anyway is more like not around people too. Like, I woke up this morning to skate before I came here and I knew like... I have to be at the park before the kids, cause right. if I want a session in, I, that's when I have to go. Right. So. Yeah, you you've always been kind of a more private dude. Like. Yeah. I mean, you've been always like super cool with people, like you know. Oh, of course, I'll always be super cool with people and stuff and all that. Yeah, you you taught me though that uh, the people aren't supposed to ask you for pictures while you're eating. Yeah, I just don't get it. Like I, about, I, about, that's where you got it from. Yeah, we man taught me that. How about when it's like someone who's actually working at the restaurant? Yeah, <laughs> it's the like, that ahead. is the word. <laughs> like, okay, second. you know which door I'm gonna exit. Yeah. Just like the bathroom too. I've had dudes right. come into the bathroom, and my bros have been there too. And I'm like, dick in my hand, taking a piss. Dude, let me get a photo. Right. Dude, well, and, we, I'm, we, and I'm like, every restroom only has a one way in and a one way out. Like. Yeah. Wait outside the restroom. We were like, at the UFC in uh, Vegas, and some guy, Steve, was pissing in the urinal, and some guy came and put the phone in front of him while he was peeing in the urinal. Oh. And they, I'd never seen Steve get so pissed before in my I would, life. I would have been. Oh yeah, you've seen me get pissed, dude. I'm gonna make a YouTube video. Of, you like backhanded the the phone out of his hand. You were so pissed. I've like, yeah. never seen you react like that. But like it was, I almost stepped in. But I'm like, dude, this, this is not even my fight. Like, but that was like so uncalled for that it's like, right. bro, I'm fucking taking a piss. Dude, that's pretty Dude. crazy. I got physical with the guy at a UFC fight. <laughs> I'm you're, the biggest you're, pussy ever. You're not there. Your testosterone level right. went yeah. up. You, you were like, for sure. Damn. You don't remember that? I, I vaguely do. Hey, you I, blacked out. You were so pissed. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I do. I remember that. What are other no-nos for you? I, I had this one guy the other day. This was, I was in... Was this one Texas or Georgia? I was just on our tour for our... Yeah, didn't you say you just went to Atlanta and then you went to Texas? Yeah, I went to Atlanta for, on Saturday, flew out that night, and I was in Texas on Sunday. And, we're, and what we're, was that for? Chronic Tacos. We It's uh, been around for 20 years. I've been with the brand for 14, but it's been around for 20 years, and we're going to all our shops to like thank the community, meet and greet, and take photos. I, I see it on your Instagram yeah. where it's like, Chronic Tacos, meet and greet with Wee Man. And, yeah. and I'm like, man, like... Free tacos. Somebody can win free tacos for a year. Free catering. Like, you can get, you know, so... And because it's your company, presumably, like, you're not charging a fee to no. do the meet and greet. No franchise fee, no charging, nothing. It's... it's uh. It's, but, but dude, that's a good deal, right? Like when when Jackass 3D came out and you had the the chronic oh, tacos dude, at the Roosevelt Hotel. Oh no, I'm I'm saying in the movie. It oh, was, in the it movie, was built into the movie, yeah. wasn't it? Dunn's no, motorcycle Dunn's, jump, yeah, and Dunn's, it was like they put it on the screen. Sponsored and, by Wee Man's Chronic Tacos. They leaned into it. Yeah, and it was they they thought it was funny to lean into it, and it was like I wonder if you could put a dollar amount of value that that like. I have the craziest story for you right now. <laughs> Paul Walker and his brother Caleb Walker were at our premiere, so the first time it showed, 
and they saw that and they said to each other that's the restaurant we got a franchise and they franchised it they Caleb Walker now his brother his brother that so he has two brothers Paul Walker and Caleb's the one who looks like him and plays him in the the last movie the Furious Fast and Furious uh-huh. is and they came and they franchised because they saw in the dark, dude, we man's rad. Like, uh, what do you mean they franchised? They bought a couple stores. They, 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 they that have means one. They opened a location. Yeah, they have one in Huntington Beach. The that's theirs. Bella Terra. It's yep. It's the Walker families. Wow. Yeah, they're part of the Chronic Taco f- like family. They're I one mean, of their franchisees. Yeah, what Jackass Three D did for the brand of Chronic Tacos has to be like that. Yeah, it has to be a lot. That's one big <laughs> thing right there. You know. Right. So yeah. they were. He told me because we were thinking of doing another restaurant, and then we go there and we sit that. And Paul looked at him and goes, "No, we're doing this." Well, how many stores did you have at uh, J J three? At J three, I think we That's had three or four, right? No, we the the brand's been around for a little okay. bit. I I joined. It started in two thousand two, and by the time I joined in two thousand eight, it had. 26. Oh, wow. And then how many do you have now? We have 50 now, but we've gotten up to 60. 60? So, so there's ones that have closed, ones that have opened. And, like, we've gone through a lot the of... The pandemic like, served to trim the fat a little Oh, we bit. did definitely trim the fat during the pandemic. Yeah. But now, ever since, we're on a roll. Like, it, we're... we're the, even okay. in L.A. So what are the chances, realistically... <laughs> Of us getting Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole into Chronic Tacos. Done. Yes. <laughs> what yes. Are you, what are the chance? You're my bro, yeah. dude. Yeah, dude. I remember we were talking about at some point like a Stevo, uh, like veggie burrito kind of a situation or something. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but dude. No, mean, the Stevo hot sauce. It would mean that, the world done. to me. Dead. Right here. That would mean signed, after. sealed, and delivered. Dead. <laughs> Friday, Friday when we go to the when we go to Type Box. Yeah. And we're doing all that. I'll make the call, and Why we'll maybe and we'll, like I'll stop by on the way down, and we'll ship them out. Dude, That's I love cool. It. Yeah. Dude. Way to go. And uh, don't you guys have something else going on Friday, too? Yeah. Well, the, the reason well. we're going down to Tightbox Packing is to sign our <laughs> new skateboard. What do they look like? <laughs> Dude. Well, it's, it's, Surprisingly, it's, you should ask. Wow. It's, it's, Boom. It's, right it's, here. It's me and Wee Man in a full metal issues. heavy metal regalia, spandex, animal print <laughs> pants, just... <laughs> animal print headband it's like <laughs> just chopped up heavy metal shirt like oh it's so dope but what people have to know too these aren't heat transfer graphics these are screen printed Silk old screen. school yeah old school style and look at all the colors we did there's we like 16 colors we didn't half ass we did not half ass at all all this is a dying art the art of silk screening and you know what else we're not half-assing is the shipping of these beautiful boards to our wonderful customers because we use ship station and it is just the toppest notch one interface that brings together all of your e-commerce activity and makes it easy to use whether you're shipping stuff on amazon etsy your own website doesn't matter it all comes into one interface and it brings in all of the different shipping methods fedex ups post office and it gives you the best rates that you can get rates which are normally reserved for fortune 500 companies all in one place couldn't be easier when you get your order you print out your label boom And that's how I ship all of my merch, all of it. And you can do it too. Plus, you can get a 60-day free trial if you go to ShipStation.com. And then on the front page, you click the microphone in the top right corner, plug in the promo code STEVO, and you're off and running with a 60-day free trial. Hassle-free shipping and you can just figure out how easy it is and how much it can boost your business because selling stuff online is the way to go. So get to it. Go to shipstation.com, click the microphone in the top right corner, plug in the promo code Stevo, and make ship happen like we are with these boards. Available at stevo.com. Now, let's talk about these boards a little more. 
We, yeah. We're doing these boards for real. That's cool. And uh, yeah. I Steve, love it. Man. I loved when you sent me. You, so I had a photo in Wild Boys where I looked exactly like this. Because we did a heavy metal right. uh, bloodbath yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, it was, it was the rattlesnake tattoo. No, no, the, the snake bite tattoo. Snake bite tattoo. Was. And we were all metaled out. And I had a photo by myself like this. And Steve-O sent it to me. He goes, dude, I've always loved this photo. I'm like, oh, thanks. And then next thing you know, he's like, dude, let's do a metal board together. Yeah. And I'm like, if that's what you want to do, bro, I'm down. That's I really got cool. You. Like, I, I've fallen in love with skateboarding just all over again, man. Like, uh, not that I ever wasn't in love with it, but I've actually, I, I consider myself a, a born-again skateboarder. And I've been a born-again skateboarder many times. But, like, I, I, I think just, it, I love it happens it so to much. everybody. Yeah. Because you go through these phases. There's there's times where, <laughs> right. you, you know, and and it's life in general. You go through, like, different things, and you stop a little, and then you come back. Like, But, uh, but dude, everything that's good in my life, <clears throat> you know, people say everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. And <laughs> I, I really believe everything I need to know I learned from skateboarding. That's every skater's thing, dude. Skateboarder. I, I, yeah. Be, and a lot of people outside of skateboarding say skateboarders in general in life are going to make it and the reason sure. is you go out there every day and you fail 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 yep. until you make the trick that one time right. and that feeling you get so in life you're going to fail like 100%. in everything you do you're going to fail yeah life's not perfect but for somebody else who doesn't have that feeling all the time the first time they fail can be very traumatic. And they might not fail like through school or whatever. They may do super well, get A's all the way. So right. they're just, it's it's like the dopamine of like Instagram their whole life. And then they get fired from a job and it's like the end of the world. They just failed. And they don't know that feeling because it's the first time mm -hmm. they've ever had failure. Right. <laughs> rejection. Yeah, I mean, yeah, rejection. That 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 is a huge part of it. Also, like... Just the sacrifice. I mean, it's so fucking difficult. You yeah. know, like I I had an interesting conversation with with uh, with Tony Hawk where I was saying that um, I started skateboarding after I saw the first Back to the Future movie in 1985, and that year because of that Back to the Future movie, it's like there was a skateboard underneath every fucking Christmas tree in the world. <laughs> like skateboarding was the biggest fad. Every fucking kid got one, and in short order, like. 90% of those fucking kids discovered, wow, this shit's difficult. And I fall down and it hurts. Like, And they, they just gave up on it. And the only kids that stuck with it were the kids that were willing to just fucking make that sacrifice. You know, like like skateboarding weeds out pussies. Yeah. It weeds out quitters. And it just, it just d distills down the, the fucking just hardcore people who will go for it and persevere and fucking is that why you got into skateboarding because of back to the future yeah really and 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 uh and then tony hawk described that wow that's interesting that you think of that like uh <clears throat> the biggest boon for skateboarding was because of tony hawk's video games yeah that was a huge one for what, all like those in, in the nine, like 97 nah, that was uh 2000. 2000 later 2000 when did the first one the on playstation come out the, it was like 98 I don't know. That Maybe. means that Tony Hawk did the 900 famously in 1999. And I think that that made, like, oh. that, that created yeah, the momentum it was that turned in. It was, because uh, my character, after they did it, came in on Pro Skater 2. And, like, they were already, it was booming. That, that's already. Was, when, was, that, was that super lucrative for you? What do you mean? The, having the, your having character. Having character in the video People game? People still talk about it. Right, but, but, but did they pay you a bunch of money? Uh, they, I, had, I remember, like, I had a character in Tony Hawk's Underground 2. Like, it was, like, a uh, secret character that you had to, like, yeah. find and unlock. And then you'd be Steve-O riding around on a mechanical bull through the game. And, uh, like, to have my character, I got paid 5000 bucks. Like, that's I think it. I got the, yeah, I think I got the exact same thing. But you're saying, like, on the first one, like, those people that made the characters are, like, set. Well, the, the oh, main, all those the, dudes. The all characters. the main characters. Like, yeah. Alyssa Steamer. Bam. Bam. Kareem, Muska, Rodney, yeah. all those guys. Life changing oh, money. That yeah, that was. What do you mean like like, over a mill? I, I think so. I, I think so. And, and royalties. I, 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 they may have gotten royalties. 
That's, I, a, that's I th- a good I think, Yeah, I think but, it was life-changing money. I think they got royalties. And for all of the, um, like, piracy and shit in the world, like, you know, like, goddamn video games, you pay 60 bucks for the disc that costs two bucks to make. I mean, it's the biggest... Not even two bucks. Not even, it's the biggest fucking profit margin. Yeah ever yeah. in the world and I don't I somehow think that you couldn't like uh, pirate them either I think that uh, at that time I, yeah I don't think you I mean, can't, uh, yeah you can't buy yeah. like one kid buys one copy and goes dude I got it all for all of us chip in no, six you can do that with music you can yeah. do that with music since back in the day but I don't think that ever video applied game. to video games I, think that, I don't think that they that they were uh, hemorrhaging money is yeah. that how people are still playing video games a disc or is it like a Netflix thing where you now, can like now, now, like, it's, dude, now it's streaming you're not gonna believe this uh oh I fucking we were we went into Best Buy and I was just like yeah fuck I want to get if I wanted to get like a new coffee maker for the tour bus and and I walk down the aisle and I see this fucking super souped up fucking steering wheel with foot pedals and I'm like man it'd be kind of fun to fucking be playing race car on the tour bus while we're driving around and then I learn in order to use that fucking steering wheel you have to buy a console and I go oh my god am I about to buy an Xbox video no. game console it goes no. against everything you fucking <laughs> did no everything way. I stand you for test. No. <laughs> I, I did it if you dude. bought you that did? I did it but I lost the cord to the things we were never able to use it what cord Wait, to what you thing? bought the whole console I bought a console and the steering wheel motherfucker so that we could fucking race cars while we're driving down the road for what the game you don't even know what game you got I, yeah we looked it up <laughs> you know and to answer your question well, you I, I, bought, <laughs> I bought it and after I set it up I already lost cords I, know, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I, I never even played it once I've never played it once <laughs> <laughs> no, oh never, my god never even got it to work it's sitting on the tour bus just as a reminder that I fucking failed <laughs> There you go, failing yeah, again. I fucking, that is just a dumb thing. Uh, yeah. Well, that's cool. But video, yeah, video games, like, fucking big money if you're an actual, like, main character. Yeah, if you develop did, one. Did you ever see there was, like, some big video game contest? This was, like, this right before, before COVID or whatever. And it was, like, a 16-year-old kid, like, beat out, like, 5,000 people. Playing like Fortnite, like or something. whatever, one of those, yeah, and won three million. Like he's like, all right, hey, mom and dad, you now live at my house. Yeah, <laughs> or like on TikTok, you can see like some of those fucking smoking hot chicks that are just on Twitch playing video games, making bank. Jesus, dude, that's like the biggest thing in fucking YouTube. Maybe not anymore, but. And this is why I hate video games is because I think that like it, it, I think that it's just a, a criminal waste of time and energy and effort. Crim- I, what do you mean by I, like like you know criminal waste like somebody who's in jail so that, just plays? No, no, I'm just let's say like uh, you got really good at a video game. Okay. Okay, where did that get you in life? You know, like that, 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 stuck that, on the couch. That's what I always yeah. said. Like uh, I, you know, like how how does being good at video games get you laid? You know, or get you paid? You know, I, and I couldn't figure that out. I'm like, okay, so you're just putting a lot of genuine work and time and effort into something that's not going to benefit you in life. Well, now people on Twitch are getting paid and laid. Right. And on and top... laid? Dude, there's some fucking banging ass Are they getting laid in the real world or the meta, the metaverse? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Then came the phenomenon of people whiling away useful hours of their life watching videos of other assholes playing video games yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean my my cousin's watching like minecraft like people like playing and talking about like narrating their whole experience i, I saw i was on uh, an american airlines flight i think or some european flight and uh in their little video on demand library of the airplane there was an, a documentary called are video games really dangerous or do, do, does uh, video game violence lead to real life violence and i thought ooh, that's uh an interesting topic you know like I, I watched the whole thing and they said uh basically to paraphrase what the whole takeaway was was that there is no link between video game violence and real life violence but there's a huge link between like uh playing video games and being a complete fucking loser that's not what it is <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that that's why Americans are fat and fucking lazy and unmotivated because they're not getting outside and exercising. They're sitting on the fucking couch playing stupid video games. 
Yeah, I wonder why that is. <laughs> I mean, you grew up in Germany. Alienators. No, I didn't. I grew up like summers and stuff there. Mm. It's I don't. It, they ride bikes everywhere. But here, here. Oh, speaking of that, I, when I was a kid, my bike was my freedom. Sure. Like you rode everywhere, and then my skateboard was the next right. one. Yeah. You know, but before my skateboard was my bike. Like, you got out of the house and you rode to your friend's house. Or sure. rode and went to the beach with your friends and stuff. It was freedom. No joke. I was at a co- clothing company the other day. And they had, like, a hundred of the same little kid bikes. They're, like, ones that they don't even have pedals. It's that kids use to, like, pedal okay. like with their feet. And then they had a couple bigger ones. And we're like, hey, what what's with the bikes? Like, why so many? This isn't even what you do. Like, And they were like... We donate these to schools for PE and stuff. And the lady goes, do you know that right now in the States, 80% of youth, young kids and all that, don't know how to ride a bike? Wow. 80%. <laughs> hmm. I, th- I thought you were going to say 80% of Americans born after <laughs> year 2000 will develop type 2 diabetes. But it's not 80%. It's like... <laughs> Like thirty three percent. No, Dude, but no, gnarly. they don't. Eat, they don't even ride bikes, and it is past two thousand. Two the two thousand. Yeah. Because right now, two thousand and one <laughs> is when twenty one year olds are were born. Right. Isn't that crazy? Two thousand one. Somebody who was born right. in two thousand one is twenty one this year. That's when I graduated high school. Yeah. I mean, right. people are riding like electric scooters now. Like they're not. Oh, yeah, even they riding don't even. Bikes. They don't even use power. I mean, dude, mm-hmm. like the diabetes is so gnarly and like like it, it, it's I, I forget I forget what the actual number is but it's I think one in three I think one in three I Americans think it is one in three because if it is 30, yeah. 35% it is I think one in I, three I saw that statistic one in three Americans born after year 2000 will develop type 2 diabetes one in three that's how fucking awful the the nutrition the, and the physical therapy, like, yeah, physical, no, like the, PE, the, the, physical the, education. No exercise, shitty diet. Mm-hmm. Just go to school and play on your computer. Sit on your fucking sofa yeah, on your yeah. fucking phone and don't exercise and eat dog shit. Jesus. Yeah. Well, what got you into skateboarding? Oh, it was my, uh, I, I always wanted, I used to read like surfer magazines and stuff. Never got really into surfing, but in the back page was always the skateboards and I always dug him like I want a skateboard and then my mom of course separated from my dad and she went out with this surfer dude who skated and she bought him one one time like at a skate shop and I was so pissed I was like that's what I want you know it's like eight or nine years old where were you living at that time Hermosa Beach okay yeah we were in Hermosa at the time and uh I was like that's what I want and like it was either like Christmas that was next or my birthday, and I got one, and I never put it down ever since. What was your first board? Uh, it was like a Veriflex, like the Doctor. I had to, it was a robot that said the Doctor on it. That's pretty. And cool. then Veriflex. my next real board was uh, Rodney Mullen. I have I have it tattooed on me because Rodney Mullen, uh, a freestyle, freestyle board. board. And I was street skating on. It. I was board sliding curbs on my Rodney Mullen freestyle what year deck. Was that? Uh, 1987, 88. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I had, one, I had 101 trucks. I'm one year older than O. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. You just turned 48? I, I just turned 48. Yeah, I'm 49. Yeah, <clears throat> you were born 74. Yep. I'm 73, yeah. We were one year apart. Hmm. So, so <laughs> when, when do you turn 50? May. The next May. Damn. Yeah, I'll be so the So we're about fighter. exactly a year apart. Yeah. Do you have plans right. for the big five zero? I haven't decided yet because I'm in this and I'm like this. I don't know what's been going on this like this last year. We've been doing so much, and and I don't know if it's because I'm 49 and I feel like I'm like where am I at this point in life? I love uh, skating. I love always. That's what I want to always keep doing. Now. That's happy to me, but I'm like I I go everywhere. And I'm just like, all right, this is cool, you know, whatever. Been all over the world, everything. And I'm like, what do I want to like? Really, do I need to like go out with a bang, like party wasted fifty, or do I want to plan something cool and go far away and be like, I did something pretty rad hmm. for fifty. Yeah, you know. 
Speak. Which is which is more my take. Because anybody goes, oh, I fucking like, like all the right, bees right, right. and crazy party, like, you know? And where haven't you been? And where do you want to go? You want to go to, like, Mongolia, or you want to go to, like... I can't Canada? picture Jason wanting to go to Mongolia. <laughs> I mean, you've already been to, like, Asia, Yeah, right? I've been to Asia. What about the Antarctica? I've even Antarctica? been to Korea. I we, we, were in, we were, like, like us together. Have we been to uh, Thailand, Kenya, to Kenya, India, India, Japan, Japan. Um, and, and dude, like all in, over the States, all over we Canada, were, we were in Australia together, right? Austra- or where, where we were, well, yeah, we were for the 2006 thing. Yeah. For the, the, uh, number two. For number two. All and over for, Canada. Yeah. Uh, where would you want to go though? I and mean, where would you want to go? You've been everywhere. Remember when we were in, in Cancun? <laughs> <laughs> That was uh Jesus. Yeah, that was that was nuts. That was way. What year was that? We, we, we went to Cancun. That was like two thousand three, two thousand four. No, 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 it was two thousand one with Donald. Oh, that was two. That was the first time that we because uh, it was before the movie. It was, before it was the between movie. the show and the movie. And we, we sold out the largest nightclub in Mexico with what we, we didn't even know was a show. <laughs> we just showed up. Yeah. And what you got? How long had you guys known each other before that? I mean, we had. not <laughs> Like, Not old, since Jackass. Jackass was the first. I, we, we never met until we were filming the second season of Jackass. Yeah, because the first season we all filmed and just yeah. put the put the yeah. shit in. Like, everybody, okay, bam, and everybody from for, that yeah, side. Everything was filmed separately and just and put And then together. put it together. And so somebody and, was like, come out to Cancun, we're partying, and then you guys showed up and there's a show? Yeah. You know what's crazy? I met Nick Dunlap before Steve-O. He got my number from, like, you, you're... <laughs> Chick or something? Yes. Like, yes. I met Nick, Nick Dunlap, Dunlap was my first ever representative. Steven. Yeah. So that was pretty crazy, and it, that's a pretty crazy one to have yeah. in the books. But 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 t- suffice it to say, we've been all over the world together. Mm-hmm. Now you, you said something about get, getting wasted. There was a period where you were sober. Yeah, I then, did for four years. Four years, and then you like now you just like just rock. No. I have, uh, and and during COVID, kind of did it again because it was like, all right, go skate and then barbecue and then drink. Sounded like on Shark Week you got pretty hammered in the airport. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> I got hammered in Shark Week the whole time. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> but but what's so crazy is, and it's so funny, and I don't mean to bring him up, but Bam always is like when when we were talking about Jackass Four. Right, and they're like you can't party, you can't do nothing. Right, why is Wee Man allowed? Okay. Why is Wee Man allowed to go party and all well, that? And it was like Wee Man, because Wee Man's not showing up in jails <laughs> and psych wards and rehabs. Yeah, and it, like it, Wee Man's not like. One time I tried to, uh, I was just trying to get through to Bam, and I was like, I I, I just typed into the search bar of TMZ. Bam Margera, just to like, just yeah. to kind of go through Prove just the feed, just the feed of his art, and it was like so gnarly, just one thing after another. Everything it was just like I was just like, bam. It was like Trump t- typing in Trump on CNN or something like just. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I don't want to get like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to. We don't need to. We don't need to do that. Yeah, but no. uh, but yeah, but. Yeah, so but, but clearly you you you, you <clears throat> don't have to go to rehab. You're not showing up in jail. Yeah, and so I don't like good. I don't wake up and go, oh dude, I need to party. You know what I right, mean? Right, 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 right. I'll just like if it's a good time and we're having a good time. When was the last time you've been drunk? Last night? No, uh, over the weekend I got. It wasn't. I'm like I just get buzzed with you know, because I was out with the chronic taco dudes yeah, yeah. but I, I don't go out and get like crazy like we used right. to we used to go out and we'd be like fine chicks party blah you know I remember. and now it's just like adult style we just ah, have a good time yeah i mean back in the day when i'd be fucking so gnarly yeah like you never did cocaine huh? nope never did it once bless we man's heart for never doing cocaine I will say he's about to spill the beans on all of the drugs that he actually has done. And that's okay because he's communicating. It's important to do that. And you know, it's very helpful to do that with a therapist. And so now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp.com is the place to get linked up with a 
top-notch qualified therapist so that you can work your stuff out, man. I mean, you take your car to get an oil change, right? You, uh, you go to the gym to keep your body fit. Why wouldn't you maintain your peace of mind, man? I do it. Uh, I see a therapist regularly, and I feel way better off for it. I think you will, too. If you haven't tried it, I think it is worth a shot. And the way to do it is at betterhelp.com. That's better, H-E-L-P, dot com slash Devo so that you can get 10% off of your first month. And when you get there, you're going to fill out a quick and easy questionnaire to get matched up with the perfect therapist for you. You'll be able to switch therapists if you want. And uh, really... I think it's very much worth giving giving it a shot. They're helping untold thousands of people, including myself. I feel very good about it, and I feel very good about suggesting that you go to betterhelp.com slash Devo, again, for 10% off your first month. And it's already the most affordable way to get therapy. So... Go to betterhelp.com slash Stevo. And now let's talk about Wee Man's drug use. Yeah, because I, I remember, uh, like, I would be like, <laughs> Would you travel to, with cocaine to other countries? Or? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely did. These guys definitely kept me off of cocaine. <laughs> Because I by was, these guys, he means me. <laughs> <laughs> Your multiple because we would be out. And then it would just be Steve up like, damn, 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 yeah, dude, I'm going to start a t-shirt company, I'm going to have a car company. like, And I'm like, dude, that's all these dudes do is party all night. They get the guy who fucking got them the drugs now as their new best friend. And all these dudes do all night is just tell each other the next venture they're going to do. It's the worst. And I would, I'd want to kill all of them. Because I'm like, dude, we're on tour. We got to do shit or we got to film tomorrow. And you're just sitting oh, here. we were in Hawaii. Yapping about blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm going to kill you. And I'm like, I'll yeah. never do that. And yeah. I've had piles in front of me. I've had it put in my hands. Like at parties, like, here you go. And I'm like, oh, fuck this. Yeah, that, that, that's good. Did you ever smoke a cigarette? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. I've smoked weed, too. You ever done E? Never done E. Never done mushrooms. Mushrooms is like a hot thing right now where everybody's doing mushrooms. Like, no. Nah. Yeah. What about that? Never did acid. Never did acid. Never went. Oh, did whippets. <laughs> I did whippets. Uh, oh, yeah. Where at? Where, 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 did I house? No, you never gave them to me. Me Good. and my buddies just did a couple. And I didn't like it. It was that weird, like, wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah. I'm like, oh, no, don't want to be there. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy, dude. So with uh, Chronic Tacos, like it's it's the business is doing exceptionally well. Yeah, it's it's picking up momentum. And like uh, I think it was before the pandemic, you were saying that uh, you know that Chronic Tacos, your 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 goal is to build it up, build it up, and then sell the whole company for just a monstrous amount of money and retire. It's still the dream. Yeah. <laughs> Are you close and to that, that dream? I mean, and that, that's um, Can't talk it, about it? Yeah, that's that's um, that, yeah. We can cut that out. No, that's fine. I'll, I'll mention that, you know, we just don't I mean, that, that's it. a perfectly viable business plan. Yeah. We talked to Rob Durdick. Yeah. Durdick about... Uh, he, he's he, done he, it he multiple times. He too. does that over and over, over and over again. That's his goal. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to do it. it with Merge Four Socks, too, and we just got to a point and... I love yeah. them and all that, but I stepped down off the board of that too. Yeah. Where you you know, you but yeah. But with Chronic I've been with so many years that uh you know, eventually it will. Yeah. It's uh, every every fa and I don't call us fast food, I call us like fast casual, but every fast food brand is under another umbrella mm -hmm. right. of other companies, you know? What? So what was it? Chipotle is owned by McDonald's. Is yeah. that right? No, the, and Taco Bell's by Pepsi. Really? Yeah. yeah. I thought the whole thing with Chipotle and McDonald's was they funded them in 2003 and then they if it, like sold it off like in 2009, 2010. They may have. I don't remember the last yeah, thing. Yeah, don't, don't, uh, 
Yeah. Take my word for it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it could be it could be in that situation. But I even think nowadays they might even be under another umbrella. Probably. Even for big sure. nice restaurants are all under umbrellas of other companies. Right. You know? Um you were like were were a professional skateboarder for Dogtown, like mm-hmm. way back in the day. Mm-hmm. And then I remember, like a, a number of years back, you started your own skateboard company called Nullity. Yeah. And put together your own team. Yeah. But then you've uh, more recently had boards come out with Dogtown we again. We reissued my board through Dogtown and stuff, uh-huh. and that did great. We we're gonna probably want to do it again, but I told them to put it on hold because of our collab. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't want them to like be like back and forth with each other i wanted that sold out so then I, it was like yeah. this time we were we were talking about it and i go oh no steve came to me and we're gonna do this yeah and i, mean, I wanted I, to do this and yeah. you know just have that as the one board out right sure. now too okay, so, so you just want to have one board at a time yeah i mean maybe down the line me and you'll do a 2.0 yeah. yeah. and i'll have another dogtown board out too so yeah it's, I, I think it's one of our best the best design that we have Rad, thank you for that. Yeah, I, I really like it. Yeah, dude, I, I, I love it as well. Um, you, uh, your website, weeman.com, I was have... dark, <laughs> but, but it's still dark, aren't they? you know, if, if we're honest. But you lost control of it, and Scott Randolph dug it up. And, and I don't it. know if I ever had it. I may have they had They were like, it. Yeah, somebody bought it in like 2003 or something like that. And then you thought you had it, but you didn't. And so th- then I was like trying to negotiate. I was like, well, well, let's see if they send you like a, a two-step verification. And I was like, okay, they said they sent you a verification. Did you get it? And you're like, nope. nope. And yeah. the guy was like, yeah, some some company bought it out. And so yeah, I think kind of when like the internet started or whatever and did all that, I think somebody nabbed it before me. And I remember even trying to get it. And it was an Irish guy. <laughs> and he goes, I don't know who we man is. We're all we man, at, like, out here. Oh, wow. And, yeah, and it's like, that's what they just call each other. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. And then, like, after so, so, so many years of getting even more famous and more famous and more famous, I was like, oh, whoever has it is ready to cash in. I don't know what you guys got it for, but Steve-O and Scott got it for me. And I'm, like, the most thankful right now. We're gonna have the boards on it. I have the t-shirt. I have t-shirts yeah. being custom made. I mean, dude, you gotta have a website. Like, yeah, uh, the, you know, the website is just like the the hub. It's like the dashboard for your career. Is kind of how it works. You know, it's where you want to send everybody to your ecosystem. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, getting more famous, dude, is it crazy how? Like, I mean, we've been around for 20 years. You know, people recognize I, us wherever we go. But th- this last movie coming out, like, I really noticed, like, the way... It's a whole different thing, dude. Yeah, it's like, wow, we're like... We're, we're like... Because sp- I think the 10-year gap. Right, like, I, mean, dude, I, I mean, just I just noticed it a lot. And, and here's the thing, too, that fucking kind of, like... It, it, it gets... It, since this last movie came out, it's gotten to a point like where it's actually really difficult to get around in public because it's like you know there's it's it's kind of just overwhelming with like pictures and dude, and, and, and stuff. You like, don't even know, dude. And and it's I, and and it's 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 to a extent that like it's impossible to to keep up with it, and it's impossible to not get like. But, you know, I find myself getting, like, grumpy, and I fucking hate it, man. I like when people are like, can't remember a photo, and I'm like, put it on selfie, let's go, 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 go. You know, like, and I'm, like, short with I, people. I haven't gotten that short with people, but my lady says, I'm like, and the eating one. The eating one bothers me. It, it, I'm not even joking. I think manners have gone away from people. Like, I'm being serious, 100%. Yeah. Because I would never go up to somebody with, like, their hands on a burger and right. like their mouth on it and go hey like don't even say hello nice to meet you anymore that's <laughs> been long gone or they sit in the booth next to you you ever have uh, that oh and they just stare but, but, but no but hold on right, yeah, yeah. but they go like hey can i get a photo and you're like oh, well hold on and then you you're you know you're like well and you feel bad and i'm like can i finish eating and then oh okay 
whatever. But then it even comes to a point where we're like, well, I'm going. <laughs> All right, well, that's your time then, bro. Sorry. Yeah. Right. But here's one that really got me the other day. And I thought I was going to be like you in the in the porta potty or in the in the urinal. This dude, like he, like we were out in Texas, and he messaged me like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna be at the event tomorrow. Can you kick me in the nuts?" <laughs> and I'm like, and "I'm like, hey, I'll see you there." And he comes, and he's, I can tell he he wants he wants to be famous. I'm not gonna say his look because it'll give it away, but he had a certain look and all that. And he's like, "All right, you're gonna kick me." I'm like, "No, this isn't the place." What? I've seen all these other vi- like he was like stressing and in my face about it and I'm like bro I, reti- I retired from not kicking yeah so did I because yeah. then I realized what it does for these people and, what, and, and it's, it's not what it does for them it's just a bad it's not the energy I want to put out yes and I'm not saying what it does for people too but I think what it what it does in their mind for them but yeah. but the dude like was like shaking I thought he was gonna throw a swing at me and I was like oh dude if this dude throws a swing at me He's on the ground. Like, he's going to go down. And then he just, like, walks away. He's like, well, I'm coming to L.A. And I'm like, all right, come on. Come to L.A., whatever. Like, you know. And I'm like, dude, people, it, it's weird. It's weird out there. And the one yeah. guy gave you titty twisters that one time. Yeah, I, that, that's an gnarly thing. I don't, I don't like that. Um, but, yeah, it's just crazy because I've always been, like, really, <clears throat> really careful and and like it's just always been really important to me to to be good to the fans you know of like I, i'll never turn down a photo no. and even when i get the most grumpy and short like i'm always just like put it on selfie and hurry up you know like <laughs> i'm still not turning down the photo yeah i know but you i'm mean. just like put it on selfie like put it you know yeah and, uh, i just um I, I i really need to dig deep and and uh not get grumpy because I just don't, you know. No, I. Think I saw a comment on an Instagram thing that says like someone's like, dude, I met Steve-O, Like, don't believe everything you read on Reddit about somebody. He was super cool to me, and I'm like, no. I'm like, no. Wait, they're they're right talking there. shit about. They're, 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 they're like, talking shit about Reddit. Reddit. No. Right, you, you, you ever look on know, Reddit? I have no idea. I have no idea what they're. Then, then my next thing I think is like, dude, I got to do a Reddit AMA to be like, hey, dude, like Reddit community, <laughs> like I want to, you, you know. <laughs> you I should care do a Reddit so much AMA about though, people. dude. Like, I know I should. For my book, I should do it. You should totally and, do and, it. And, What's uh, a Reddit MA? And it's called Ask Me Anything, and you go on there and like uh, you, you prove that it's you by by posting a photo saying I'm gonna do an AMA for Reddit, okay. and then they know it's gonna be you, and then they're just typing in questions, and you just. I type answers to the questions you want to and the ones that are most popular get like upvoted so like okay. it's a system mm-hmm. by which they feed the most compelling stuff to the top got you all right. and, and the, all of reddit works that way so if your ama is you know popular it gets upvoted upvoted so you, you rank on reddit based on how much the community is enjoying the content got gotcha. you all right and uh, I care so much about what people think about me. That was why I'm like, I gotta fucking make things right with Reddit. Like, I can't have people out there being thinking, saying I'm an asshole. But it just, it, it, it what it kind of leads to ultimately is that shit. When people get like famous to a point, it's just too overwhelming. So yeah, like fucking. Famous, well, what do you do? Famous people get branded labeled as like arrogant shitheads and like i kind i kind of you know like it's what is it? bring me all you know of what? them or bring me none but of you them you know what you know you know what though when i was a kid i used to think oh that was shitty that that happened to the person because i would hear and this is even before for cell phones and stuff right that you would hear stories about <laughs> fans going up to someone they loved right and bothering them while they're eating and the right. person yelling at him and it gets bummed and i'm like you don't like if I came to you, Scott, and I was like, Scott, give me a photo. But you just got off the phone and something happened or whatever. Right, 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 you right, broke right, up right. with your girlfriend or you something. You right. Something, anything that now you're in a bad mood that I'm coming into you right. with your mood you, that, you know, you, you can't make everybody happy. You can't. There's but, no way. I'm just putting it out there that but I want to try. I want to try to make I'm, everybody happy. I do happen. the same thing, and I do the same thing, but you, there's no way you could, or else 
you wouldn't be making yourself happy. Right. But dude, like, I, 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 but I'm I, on the I, other I, side of it, and I okay. see you guys, and and I'm like, I look at the amount of photos that you guys take, and the trade off is like, okay, be famous or have. I wouldn't want to be famous because of that. Like, you what you do a meet and greet for 50 people twice a night. There's 100 people. You go out to Walmart or whatever. There's 20 more photos. I, I've seen you be cool you, with. Uh, 150 Anything. people and then the one person that comes up to you like that tries to be funny or it's like bro just you know hurry up and take my photo that one person will do a fucking reddit and you're an asshole but i just watched you take yes. 140 photos during the day 100 percent i don't want to take three photos in a day at a family <laughs> right, function okay. dude but but I, that's what it always is it's exactly that and that's what I'm talking about is the one right. knucklehead that comes up, and I, I don't mean to call him knucklehead or random person right, right, or whatever. Right. And I, I appreciate that, and I love that. But now let me tell you this. <laughs> like, after the pandemic, like, uh, coming back onto tour, two things that were noticeably a lot more difficult than I ever remembered them was going through airports and flying on airplanes and doing meet and greets. It was just like somehow like the time away during the pandemic and then coming back to meet and greets and airplanes. Those two things were really fucking difficult. And then now we're performing shows in big theaters. So I'm doing like 50 people meet and greet after the show. And I was, I, I was dreading it. So I came up with this fucking thing, and this is all on me. I was like, you know what? Like, if I have a marker, then everybody wants me to sign something, and it makes it take twice as long. So I'm going to go into the meet and greet deliberately not having a marker. And if somebody asks me to sign something, I'll politely say, oh, yeah, you got a marker? And they don't have one. I'm like, oh, well, you know, I don't have one. So I guess, I guess we're not going to sign anything. And, and that was my, my thing. And, and it made the meet and greets go by a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. But people would leave like, man, I wanted a signature. That's bummed, right? And I was like, I don't care because I just didn't have a marker. And then I saw a fucking comment on a YouTube video where someone says, dude, Steve-O, I got the fucking meet and greet. And he like rushed me by and I couldn't even get a signature. And I responded to the comment. I wrote, it sounds like you didn't have a marker. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry you had a bad experience. Dude. And then I told Lux about it. And we were at dinner, we were on a date. And I'm like, I saw the comment while I was in the fucking bathroom. And, and, uh, and she's like, babe, you gotta fucking be cooler. This is people that it's important. They're meeting you, and I'm like, you know what? Like, fucking Lux is right. You know, and 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 I'm just saying from my perspective, seeing that fucking comment and my shithead response to it, like I fucking it bothered me all night. I'm like, fuck. There's this person out there that's fucking that I bummed out, and that and and I decided then and there that I would rather be fucking miserable inconvenienced by like a fucking meet and greet that takes way too long and make sure every person leaves completely fucking happy than be inconvenienced and miserable by a whole night of just fucking feeling shitty about a fucking oh, shitty comment oh I see what you're so saying now, so now I'm now yeah. I'm, I'm deliberately leaning into it to make sure everybody leaves fucking like they fucking were special and fucking yeah. let's say you go ahead and do all that and you're making everybody happy then you have the fucking last person in line <laughs> or the middle person in line that's like hey can you make a video for my niece dude, who's not here you hey, like, dude, I used to go off on people I did wait when people would ask me, when people would ask me to make a video, I would I would like sometimes like kind of funny and sometimes like just straight. But I'd say, oh, I see what you're saying. I'm not dealing with enough people in person. <laughs> oh now, now you're now you're now you're introducing third party people just so that I can have to fucking deal with more fucking people. <laughs> now you're making me talk I'm, to me. now I'm, you're making you're making me talk to people who aren't even here because I'm not fucking working hard enough for you. Is that right? <laughs> I mean, it's crazy. And, and, and now you know. What I've done, I do every fucking video. Everybody asks for it, no questions same asked. Same place. I do it every day. Oh yeah, dude, cool. What, let oh, me yeah, say cool. on be, let names? me say on behalf of you guys because like <laughs> the people listening are probably going to say they're always going to find something to say like oh well they're complaining about being famous. It's like look it, I'm not famous. I travel with Steve. I've been with We Man. I've been with all those guys. They, I've seen Steve in in probably take. 
ninety thousand photos without a fucking, you know what I mean? And anybody in that situation, you would not be able to handle the amount of fucking no. photos that they take right. with a good attitude. So it's like before anybody's like, oh, you, you know, you're just so ungrateful. It's not like that at all. I've seen them bend over fucking backwards. I've seen you guys. Somebody complains about, oh, I have this niece with. It. You will fucking send them money or a flight w without even anybody yeah. even fucking yeah. no, like. Of course. You, I'll, I'll want to do a video with Steve where I'm like, hey, let's go pay for somebody's rent. And you're like, I would never do that on camera. And you'll go ahead and do it off the camera. So it's like the amount of things that people see off the camera, it's like, yeah. It, it always irks me when people do good deeds fucking for a video. I fucking hate that, dude. Yeah, like. Like, let me pay your rent. And then they get 14 million views on the video and they make so like 20 what, fucking thousand. You know what yeah. it's like? Yeah. No, we've, we've helped out. I, uh, and I'll just talk about it because I've already done it and I'll do it again. I've gone to uh, Walter Reed Hospital, and yeah. I'm, like on Christmas Day, because w there was times I didn't have a lady or whatever, and I was I like ah, I went with my family for Thanksgiving. Walter Reed is the the uh, injured vets. Injured, injured, any any injured, any medical. They're the, it's the first hospital they all come back to when they're when they're in the states. And they get injured, like limbs blown off, anything. Right. I mean, dude, you're and, big on the USO military. Like you've, you've where, hell yeah, yeah. Where have you gone on USO tours? I've gone. All, I flew around the world. Did you go to Afghanistan? Gone to Afghanistan. Gone to uh, Iraq. Iraq. One Whoa. time. One time, we were with a four-star general, and it was me, like Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, <laughs> um, <laughs> the the couple other like celebrity people. And we were in helicopters, taking off in the rain already, taking off. It was raining where we were. And we are going from, like, Afghanistan to Qatar in the rain. It was like a 30-minute flight. Ten minutes in, because we had the doors open and stuff, I see pew, pew, rockets being shot at us. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, crap. And people are like, what, what? I'm like, we're being shot at. And the pilot gets on. Um, yeah, we're going to turn around due to weather. <laughs> and I'm like, we've been flying in the weather this whole time. We're being shot at is why we're getting turned around. Whoa. Yeah. That, so That's crazy. What did your dad do in the uh, military? He was a cook. Really? Yeah, he was a cook. He was right after Vietnam. My dad was a knucklehead, too, just like us. And my grandfather, right when my dad turned 18 dropped him off at the army recruiting so really it's like you guys make him an adult you know wow. what i mean and my dad my dad's actually pretty happy that he went and did that and it did straighten him out so, yeah yeah that's pretty so you've been all over the middle east you've been, all over the you've middle been everywhere east. how many been countries have you been to do you I've count been to how many countries you've been to I could. I've been to quite a few. I'm, I, I, I'm a, I had a Scott by a little bit. It drives I'm me nuts. like 50. He's like 58. Ooh. I, I think I'm 58. I'm going to put my list down, and I can, and I can contact yeah, some people, you, too. All yeah. you got to do is just fuck around with the map. But then yeah. he's got a killer app. What's it called? Uh, there's an app called, Cordell told me about it, Ben, B-E-E-N. Okay. Like places you've been. Yeah, yeah. And you just click on the map. And and it'll generate like a, a fucking map colored in for all the countries. Percentage of the been world. There, and it'll say you've been to 20% of the world or... Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to yeah. do that. I, I did it old school with a, a big wall map of the world and put a pin put in Put pins? I remember going into people's offices yeah. and they would do a pin. That's pretty rad. No, I'm going to do it. I, I need to. I've been to places that people in those countries haven't even been to places in their own country. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Oh, my God. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. And yeah, I, when I was in India, I went to this place like a... Some spot and, and 50 kilometers down can, the road. Can people see your uh, it came out yesterday, documentary? Uh, on Indie Flicks. It's called Perfect Chaos. I have a documentary where I rode a motorcycle around India. Nice. I'll share the link. Yeah. But, but it's. Uh, I'd like to see it too. So yeah. yeah. And th there'd be people like maybe 20 miles out and they're like, oh my God, like it's such an honor that you're going to this spot, this bathing got 20 miles away. I've lived here my whole life and never been. I'm like, dude, you've never fucking been. 20 miles away from your house, your village. Jesus. I mean, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Where, um, where in Korea did you go? I went all over Seoul, and then I went to the DMX, the or G, whatever. DMX, the, all the Rough Riders went with you? Yeah, not the DMX. <laughs> the, the, the DMK, uh, the, um, the North Korea. Yeah, I went to Holy the... Holy shit, you went to North Korea? Yeah, I went, and I went on the other side of the border. And usually... DMZ. The DMZ. 
Not the DMX, the DMZ. How <laughs> <laughs> would Yo, yeah. Dimitri? <laughs> <Where you at? laughs> uh, no, but yeah, the DMZ, and I and it was pretty cool. What was crazy is you're right there, and North Korea is right there, and they have their flag way higher because they want to see t- tougher. And I'm standing there with my tour guide from Monster, and she put her backpack down on the stairs, and all of a sudden, all these soldiers are like. <laughs> The backpack. It's a bomb, huh? Because North Korea watches over and they think it's like a bomb. But then we walked down in and we were in that little, like, uh, room where you show your plans or what's going on. And nobody was in there. I'm like, I'm going to North Korea. And I fucking went over on the other side. Whoa. And then, wow. Yeah. So you could check North Korea off your I country could list. I check North Korea. I've been in North Korea. You and Rodman. Me and Rodman. Yeah. Damn. What's crazy is Rodman. I see him all the time. Dude. Because where, where you live? Yeah, he's, he lives in the same area. It, so. this, bumping into Dennis Rodman can be a lot of work. It is. <laughs> shit. As soon as he's around, I Houdini out of the place. I'm like... Phew. I mean, it, it, it can, it's a moving target. Yes. Sometimes it's more work than others. <laughs> but when he's on one, it's rough. Didn't he go to uh, Russia to talk to Putin now? He tried to, he tried but, to, but, I, but didn't, they, it didn't happen. Yeah, they, they, it didn't happen. Yep. Yeah, um, man, God, I wish that, man. And can you imagine, like, an NBA Hall of Famer where you're like, oh, shit, he's here, like, let's dip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah. And that, I mean, with all, like, appropriate love and respect for Dennis Rodman, yes. when he's on one, it's yes. a bummer. Yeah, he's a good guy. But yeah, you you want to like, uh oh, yeah. you want to not, you don't yeah. want to get caught in his radar. Yeah, because you get that's caught a, in that's his, the, the mm. eye of the storm. You uh. don't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, the only like worst one when when uh, someone's on one is Andy Dick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I gotten pretty good at avoiding Tasmanian devils around you guys and avoiding you guys. Yeah. Anytime you guys were on one, I'm like, yep, yeah, not my scene. Yeah. So. Pretty, pretty gnarly stuff. So, so you're in a, a relationship now, and yeah. it's going great. It's been going super good. She's rad. How, how long have you been together? A year and a half. A little over a year and a wow. half. Yeah, and we've gone we've gone to quite a few places. We just got back from Kauai. I that saw was, that. That was a fun trip. We've gone to Italy. We've gone... Uh, we went to Nashville and saw... And went for the 4th of July. Big bang show and then we saw rod stewart the next day nice yeah so it's been it's been fun how's the rod stewart show dude rod stewart still has it kicking soccer balls on the stage still really hanging out right like kicking soccer balls like he's like, that's what he's known for like after one song or whatever he plays he, keep up with it like no he second. kicks him out into the audience oh shit and the audience throws him back and he kicks it again wow how yeah. old is he now I want to say 78 or 81 right in there. Wow. Like, he's an older dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Who do you think crushed more beef, Rod Stewart or Bruce Springsteen? Dude, I don't Bruce know. Bruce the boss. But I used to live down the street from his one old, from Heather, whatever, that his one old lady that he was who, with. Who? Rod Stewart's lady? Yeah. Heather something. Maggie? No, Heather. <laughs> Not Maggie from the song. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah, dude. All right, and, well, and, uh, dude, I'm stoked that you mentioned your documentary. Paul, as you cut this, I need you to put a Indie link, Flicks. A little link, link to for that. Scott's. Yeah. WeMan.com yep. is hot again. Yeah. And everybody, while you can, get yourself a heavy metal Steve O. WeMan collab skateboard autographed by both of us. I might bring a couple. We still have a couple dates left. On tour for Chronic Tacos, and I might grab a couple yeah, and but buy, buy, I'll, have Scott ship them. Yeah, we'll but ship I'll, them for you. I'll, uh, with them. I'll reimburse the brand. <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll, we'll ship them to you with the whole pallet of hot sauce. <laughs> oh yeah, no, we'll get. We'll, that's oh, good. that's right, yep. dude. For yes. Fr- Friday, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm gonna make it happen, folks. If you're a fan of the Stevo and the Wee Man, and you're in Chronic Tacos, you might get yourself and, and, Stevo's. Yeah. Butthole hot sauce. And the way you ask for it, you say, excuse me, can I get a little something from my butthole? <laughs> <laughs> all right, dude. It's all-, <laughs> all right, dude. I love dude, you, brother. Thank yeah. you. Love you too, bud. <laughs> dude, that was fun. Gotta say, I feel better after uh, speaking candidly 
about like the meet and greets and stuff and just like recommitting myself to being fucking like just even more available to people. You want a shout out video, just ask. I'll do it. No problem. Whatever you need. Because that's where I'm at these days. I just want to be a great guy. And I also, I want you to read my book. It's uh, it's really, really awesome. And it's coming out this Tuesday. The sooner you order it, the better. And of course, don't forget about the Wee Man and Steve-O skateboard. Get a load of that. Look at that. It's hilarious. And uh, as always, I love my street team. Thank you so much. I will see you on the road. And I love you all. Oh, yeah, Scott's documentary is in the description. <laughs> yeah, I almost fucked Scott. <laughs>